Let's start today by looking at this example. Here I want to solve y to the fourth power minus 5y squared plus 6 equals 0. All right, now the thing is, I know how to solve linear equations, I know how to solve quadratic equations. This is a fourth degree equation, and I just don't know how to do that. That sounds really tough. Well, actually, that is true in general. Fourth degree equations can be very, very difficult. However, this one is not, because this one is quadratic-like. And a quadratic-like equation is one that looks like this. A something quantity squared plus B times something plus C equals zero. And so if you look at it like that, and I put X's in the boxes, you see that this is a quadratic equation. But now I'm gonna take out an X and I can put something else in that box. So my, my claim is that the example we just did works that way. Let me show you how. I could have taken this equation and written it something like this. Y squared squared minus five Y squared plus six equals zero, right? Y squared squared is y to the fourth power. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my quadratic like idea and I'm plugging in y squared in for those boxes. And what that means is in doing that, I can actually solve this like a quadratic equation. I can do it the same way. Okay, now what I like to show my students is this substitution idea that helps kind of take out some of the mystery of quadratic like equations. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let u be y squared, okay? If that's the case, then I can take my original equation and rewrite it like this. Well, first of all, let's think if u is y squared, then u squared is y to the fourth. Okay, so now I can take my original equation and write this as u squared minus 5u plus 6 equals 0. That is quadratic, and I know how to solve that because I know how to solve quadratic equations. I'm going to factor here. I think of two things and multiply to give me positive six and add to give me negative five. How about negative three and negative two? Okay, so that means now I have two linear equations to solve. U minus three equals zero, which means U equals three. And U minus two equals zero, which means U equals two. Great, so those are my solutions. U equals three and U equals two. But I didn't want U, right? I wanted Y. And so remember, u is the same as y squared. So now I have y squared equals three and y squared equals two. So I went back to the y language. And now I can solve these using the square root property. I take the square root of both sides. And remember, anytime you take the square root of both sides, since I'm taking the square root of both sides, I have to include a plus or minus there. So I have y equals plus or minus root three and y equals plus or minus root two. So this tells me that I have four solutions to my original equation. If I plug in plus or minus square root of three or plus or minus square root of two in for y, I have an identity. Okay, so let me show you a couple more examples of this and hopefully it'll make sense. All right, so here's my first example. I wanna solve the following. x squared minus five quantity squared plus five times x squared minus five minus 36 equals zero. This looks really tough. This looks very challenging. I mean, I gotta foil out this x squared minus five, and then I got a lot of other stuff to do. I'm gonna end up with a degree four polynomial. I just don't know what to do, except I notice that this is the formula, something quantity squared plus five times something minus 36 equals zero. I think I can handle that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you be this x squared minus five. Okay, so if I do that, then my original equation then becomes u squared plus five u minus 36 equals zero. I can factor this because I need, I need to think of two things that multiply to give me negative 36 and add to give me positive five. It's not six and six this time. How else can you get 36? How about u plus nine and u minus four? Right, nine and negative four multiply to give me negative 36, they had to give me positive five. So here I get u equals negative nine and u equals four. Let's go back into our x language here. I have, that means I have x squared minus five equals negative nine and x squared minus five equals four. So I have two different quadratic equations. That I'll call one and two, but we can quickly solve these. So the first one, I have x squared, let's bring the negative five over, so I have x squared 
equals a negative nine plus five gives me negative four. So I take the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus the square root of negative four. Now depending on your textbook, some textbooks will say this has no solution. Other textbooks will go into the complex numbers. So if you're gonna do that, you're gonna have plus or minus two, because the square root of four is two, the square root of negative one is i. So get plus or minus two i. All right, now for equation two, it's a similar thing. Let me bring over the negative five. So I have x squared equals four plus five, which is nine. So taking the square root of both sides, remember when I take the square root, I have to put in plus or minus. So you get plus or minus three. All right, so my solution set, sometimes we write it like this. It would be three, negative three, two i, and negative two i. Okay, so some books like to write their solutions in braces like this. Others are just fine if you have the x equals all right, but either way, those are solutions. We have four solutions, plus or minus three, plus or minus two i. All right, let me show you one more. All right, so for part b here, we have two x to the two thirds power minus seven x to the one thirds power plus three equals zero. Uh, this does not look quadratic-like at all at first, unless, let's do this. Let's let u be x to the one third power. So if that's the case, then u squared is x to the one third squared. If I remember properties of exponents, that means I have x to the two thirds power. Great, so that means here that my equation then becomes two u squared minus seven u plus three equals zero. Okay, now I can, I can solve this equation because this is quadratic. Worst case scenario, I have to use quadratic formula. I don't think I will here though, I think for this one, I can say 2u minus 1 times u minus 3, okay? So then I end up with u equals 1 half and u equals third. Now remember, we're not really interested in solving for u here. We're solving for x. So let's get it back into our x. Let's get it back into our x language. So that means for my first one, I have x to the one third power equals 1 half. And for my second one, I have x to the one third power equals 3. All right, so for the first one, all I need to do is cube both sides, right? So raise both sides to the third power. So x to the one third cubed becomes x, and one half cubed is one half times one half times one half. I get one eighth. On the other side, on part two, we're gonna cube both sides. And so x to the one third cubed is x, and three cubed is three times three times three, which is 27. All right, so there are my solutions. If you want to write it in braces as a solution set, you have 1 8 and 27. Quadratic-like equations can be kind of funny, but once you see them, it's very hard to unsee them. And once you see it, it's actually not very difficult. It's just solving a quadratic equation. If you have any more questions on this, I'd be glad to help you. Please don't hesitate to ask, and thanks for watching.